Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Obama, accompanied by the Prime Minister of the Republic of Italy and Mrs. Agnese Landini. Good evening, everybody. Buonasera. On behalf of my, Michelle and myself, welcome to the White House, and welcome to the final state dinner of my presidency. But in the immortal words of a great Italian-American, Yogi Berra, it ain't over till it's over. And so, and so we have a wonderful evening ahead of us as we celebrate the great alliance between the United States and Italy with our great friends, Prime Minister Matteo Renzi, and and Mrs. Agnese Landini. Uh, I have to say this is a remarkable crowd. Uh, I will confess that at first I was a little nervous about this dinner. Uh, after all, Matteo is called Il Rotamatore, the scrapper, the demolition man, and Roberto Benigni is here as well, and he has promised not to jump on the tables. <laughs> Ask any Italian or Italian-American, and they'll tell you that the dinners can get somewhat animated. People can get excited, uh, especially if you, your grandmother thinks you're not eating enough. And so Michelle and I decided to just think of this as a typical Italian Sunday dinner surrounded by family and great friends, paisans, and pasta. But tonight we're reminded that American democracy has been graced by the touch of Italy. Our declaration that all men are created equal was penned by Thomas Jefferson, and it was a concept shared by his friend, also from Florence, Firenze, uh, Filippo Mattaisi. We stand before the Lincoln Memorial and see the work of Pizzarelli brothers. We look up at the dome of the US Capitol and marvel at the touch of Bromidi. Then again, some days our presidential campaigns can seem like Dante's Inferno. Most of all, we see the spirit of Italy and the friendships between our people in so many proud Italian Americans. I suspect that many of you here tonight are thinking of your own families, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents who left the old country, who toiled and sacrificed and gave everything they had so that the next generation could succeed. And your presence here tonight shows that America is a place where if you work hard, no matter what you look like, what your last name is, how many vowels you have in your name, you can make it if you try. And even if we are not Italian-American or Mets fans, we can celebrate 
that Mike Piazza is finally in the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, I also want to take this occasion to once again thank my great friend, Matteo. Uh, he may be the youngest prime minister in modern Italian history. He makes me feel old, which is unfortunate. When I came in, I was the young guy. Now he's the young guy. Uh, but from the first time we met, I could see that he represented the energy and the optimism, the vision, and the values that can carry Italy and Europe forward. He is, as you say, in Italy, buono come el pane. Matteo, I cannot thank you enough for your excellent partnership as we've worked to advance the security and prosperity of our citizens and the dignity of people around the world. I understand that when you were growing up, your mother would tell you stories about Robert Kennedy's commitment to justice, and she would end by telling you, Matteo, fight. As you fight for the cause of reform, know that we stand with you. I believe that Italy and the world will continue to benefit from your leadership for many years to come. Now, one of the reasons that I'm so confident that Matteo will continue to make outstanding contributions is because he has an outstanding partner in Agnazzi. Our wives keep us humble. As our Italian friends know, Matteo's first claim to fame when he was just 19 years old was he was on Italy's version of Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> this is a true story. And <laughs> Agnazzi points out that several of the sweaters and the suits that he wore were too big, which is an affront to Italian fashion. Matteo may deny it, but there's video, and you can judge for yourself. Uh, he, uh, Giorgio Armani is here, and he would be ashamed to know that the Italian Prime Minister used to wear things like this. Now, you are not alone, because when Michelle was in Milan for last year's Expo, she spoke with some young people about the importance of eating slowly and savoring your food, unlike President Obama, who she said sometimes shovels his food down. <laughs> Which is true. So the point is that Matteo and I both married up. And uh, because of our wives, we eat better, we dress better, we are better, and we thank you both. In closing, I just want to reminisce about my last visit to Rome, uh, thanks to Matteo's minister, uh, Ministry of Culture. I had the opportunity to visit the Colosseum. And one of the perks of being president is you can go to the Coliseum and nobody else is there. It was late in the day, it was quiet, the sun was going down, and as I walked across those ancient stones worn by the history of 2,000 years, uh, it was a humbling reminder of our place here on Earth. In the grand sweep of time, each of us is here only for a brief moment. So many of the things that we focus on each day. The political ups and downs, the successes and the setbacks, those things are fleeting. Uh, what matters in the end is what we built. What matters is what we leave behind, the things that will endure long after we are gone. As the poet Virgil reminded us, fortune favors the bold. And so I want to propose a toast to the enduring alliance between the United States and Italy, to our friends, Matteo and Agnese, and to the friendship between the Americans and the Italians in pursuit of the world we can build for future generations. May we always be bold. May fortune smile upon us. Salute. Cheers. And with that, let me bring to the stage the Prime Minister of Italy, Matteo Renzi. Mr. President, uh, Madam First Lady, 
the American friends, cari amici italiani, it's an incredible honor. It's an incredible privilege to be here with you in this uh, occasion of the last state dinner of President Obama. I'm really excited and really great because I think this is a special moment for the history of this country as uh, the presence of a President Obama was a special moment in the life of this great country. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's an honor for Italy, the Barack, but it's also an honor for us. So thank you all from Agnese and myself for your welcome. But I'm really in a difficult situation because uh, it's impossible for me to reply after the President Obama and also uh, this afternoon uh, I spent time to image an organization of something to, to, to give uh, a thanks and uh, it's impossible. I, uh, I, I think, for Mr. President, that we can organize uh, after the finish of uh, your service uh, a dinner in Florence, after the little work in the Uffizi's gallery and uh, in front of David, and uh, we can prepare uh, Sasha and Malia to verify if really ice cream, uh, Italian ice cream is better on the world, and then uh, not stay dinner, but with the Osteria, with the Florentine wine and Tuscan wine we can taste, uh, and we can verify if the tomatoes uh, of the garden of White House are better than tomatoes uh, of Italian products. Uh, we, can, we can try that. I know, Michelle, uh, your tomatoes are great, but after the last weeks, let me be very frank, your speech are better than your tomatoes. And, uh, Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much as Prime Minister, but thank you so much also as father of a younger daughter. And um, uh, hey Barack, you know I am a huge fan of you. You know I, I follow from the first speech in, uh, first, not first, first speech for the presidential run in February 2007 in Illinois. But when I listened to the speech of Michelle in Philadelphia, I think, <laughs> finally, finally, maybe, when I, I, I sing, uh, when they go low, we go high, I told you, finally, I found some uh, at the same level of Barack Obama, Michelle Obama. So this is uh, good. Just, uh, But uh, let me conclude with a personal consideration. If I come from a, a city called Florence, so I, I really, I really, I love a lot the, the history of uh, my country. And uh, during the Renaissance in Florence, uh, masters and students used to work together to produce masterpieces, and also not masterpieces, but uh, the goal is masterpiece. Masterpieces, they have uh, endured the 12th centuries. In those, this workshop was called uh, Bottega. Bottega was the place in which masters and students together try to do better, try to build a future. New generation acquired inside La Bottega a comprehensive vision of the future. And I think Mr. President, dear Barack, this is what you have done for us in, those period, in this period. Eight years very important for international community, not only for the United States of America. And I think your service was a, a service as a master of Renaissance, because uh, you work with us to give us an opportunity, and we work, to get, we work together exactly with the spirit of Bottega. Try to make better. Try to give a special opportunity to new generations. So as Florentine, I think I'm really great to you for your service and also for your message of the evil state of the government because with your message, 
a lot of new leaders around the world today could image the future as a good place in which image our destination and our generation. Thank you so much for that, Mr. President. Thank you so much, Master of Renaissance. So, in Italy there is an expression. Is uh, an expression who come from the share the table, uh, share the moment of a, uh, a particular moment in the dinner or in the lunch. Is an expression uh, who come from Latin. Cum and panis. Cum uh, from Latin is uh, with, panis is bread. From cum panis come a lot of things. The expression company come exactly from that. Why? Because the value in the table are exactly the value of uh, sharing not only bread, not only wine, not only food, but sharing a friendship and a common values. I think this is the real relation between the United States of America and Italy. We share the same values, the same friendship. And uh, yes, in the table, cum pupanis, we share the bread, we share the food, we share also the wine, but we share above all the future and the common values. For all the reason, I propose a toast to President Obama, to First Lady Michelle, thank you so much for your incredible journey, thank you so much for the incredible service, thank you so much for the value you inspire, not only the United States of America, but around the world. Thank you, President. Salute.